Greetings to you all. Listen carefully everyone. For what I'm going to reveal to you is very important and I hope that through this intel we can stop Octogon related to the political setup just unfolded in Paris. What I'm going to tell you concerning the Paris massacre and Switzerland behind it will bring lethal danger to me and my family as Octogon from the Alps has set all their cards on the actual preparations of what's coming up. Please someone provide a safe haven for me and my family and I will give in return actual names of Swiss Octogon members who are behind the latest Paris tragedies. Do not trust the Swiss Nazi police nor the Swiss fascist judiciary as they are involved in it up to their necks and the entire Swiss people consents with it just as Hitler's willing helpers did. Ok there we go. If you want to solve a crime as in this case the Paris massacres there are two perimeters within which the profiler is going to base the case on. First who or what is the crime serving most as in the Latin proverb is fecit qui prodest, meaning he who profits most is guilty. And second perimeter, the money trail. And I will prove to you here that both perimeters lead to Octogon, Switzerland of the Nazi Templars. Number one perimeter, did it serve the Muslims? No, on the contrary, it will set their lives in Europe 40 years back. Did it serve us, the normal people? No, we're heading towards less personal freedom and more restrictive total control New World Order laws. Did it serve the left-wing people and parties? No, on the contrary, they're going to face more police state and less libertarian freedom. In fact, it only serves the rise of the fascists, the right-wing parties and the centre of it all, Switzerland. Perimeter 2, the money trail. Charlie Hebdo is getting 250,000 euros from Google through their digital press fund and for their next week edition a prognostic estimate of 1 million copies uh, printed compared to the habitual 45,000 copies each week, which the name Hebdo means standing for weekly, Weekly Charlie. And the combined French media raised half a million euros for Charlie. This is like a farewell present to silence them up and don't talk about what really happened. Because when the whole media attention is over in a few weeks and return to their 45,000 copies or less, they will have to close the doors before summer. Why? Well, because of the internet. A lot of newspapers are in financial difficulties and have problems selling their newspapers. And this is where the problem started, really. So the whole Paris massacre is more about Je Suis newspaper. Charlie Hebdo started off in the Roaring Sixties as a revolutionary hippie-like satirical magazine making cartoons about anything that didn't fit into the zeitgeist of the sixties. They were having fun, earning an easy buck with, that, with what they could do best, drawing cartoons. And as the French traditionally love criticizing their emperors, rulers and authorities and even chop their heads off once in a while with those typical French inventions made for the occasion called guillotines, Charlie Hebdo then called Harry Kiri live in high esteem and very well paid for their efforts. So when the 90s came and more and more people swapped the newspaper for a computer it was very hard for them to get off the high horse. And what else can a cartoonist do? Then when the 21st century came along the corner as with most French revolutions it meant the guillotine for many a French newspaper and in the entire world too. 
where, like in the French subway, all newspapers in people's hands had been replaced with portable cell phones and iPads, with everyone fanatically punching the buttons of these tokens of the new revolution. So Charlie couldn't sell any more newspapers. No more work, no more money. Damn, what do we do now? The house has to be paid and the second holiday dwelling at the French Mediterranean. And with that revolutionary er era of the 60s long gone by in a new world where the only dream is finance and consumption in a world where the ego and purse can be filled beyond all limits, new ideas had to be found in a new world where incomparable wealth has replaced ethics, conscience and fraternity long ago. New rules, new guillotines, you might say. And as crime often is related to ego, it is here that Charlie Hebdo's criminal behaviour really started, leading to the spiral of violence of January 2015, now trying to suck us all in when on September 30th, 2005, another newspaper in distress from Scandinavia published the first Mohammed caricatures of the Islamic prophet. So Charlie's by then already criminal mindset thought by themselves, well, this is the publicity we need to sell more newspapers so we can survive. Well, look at that Scandinavian newspaper they're selling like mad and the whole world talks about it. We can do the same thing in France and keep the guillotine out for a couple of more years, maybe even a decade. So it was largely discussed in the editorial. They studied the judiciary consequences and awaited to see what happened in the end to the other newspaper. And when the court case finally resulted to a positive come out for the other newspaper, and only four months after those initial publications, on February the 9th, 2006, Charlie published their own disgusting little Mohammed caricatures showing the bearded, bearded geezer in all sorts of sodomizing positions. And not because of free speech as they hysterically claimed in their defense, but out of pure greed to get more publicity and more sales to save their company out of the digital grip of the 21st century and to get filthy rich again like in the good old times. Just watch how their weekly hepto sales went up from the regular 140,000 in 2005 to 480,000, that's half a million, in 2006, right after the uh, caricatures of Mohammed, and then slowly diminishing again to 45,000 in 2014. You can see that's half a million because of the, pro the profit or... You know, it's all about greed. I'm putting in the link for you. So the article was from Le Monde, which is not just any newspaper. It's one of the biggest in the world. So, um, well. And also the Wikipedia page of uh, Charlie Hebdo uh, confirms the, it says, the great commercial success of uh, sodomizing the prophet. Uh, I mean that this this is media, the mainstream media uh, prostitution. You know? They get money for pro for for sodomizing a prophet. <laughs> I mean it was right in the post 9/11 2001 era where Bush was getting us hyped up for the Crusades murdering millions and using depleted uranium weapons of mass destruction. So what the hell? Who's gonna stop us? Charlie thought. And times of war are the best moments to get filthy rich. Hey Charlie, everyone is doing it. Hey Charlie, French companies did it, collaborating for the Nazis. Switzerland is always doing it. So why not Charlie Hebdo? 
And in this time we can see a totally intransparent web of different financial enterprises owning Charlie Hebdo, even called Edition Kalashnikov at times. So you can see here the previous thing was also Le Monde, a serious newspaper. Uh, quite critical and many times. So one million euros, that was in you know 2006 when they did the Mohammed uh, caricatures. And then they called it Edition Rotative, that means uh, rotating um, editions, you know. <laughs> it is rotating all the time. Before it was Harakiri in Paris, Rue Nicolas Appert, well that's probably where they got uh, massacred. By some Muslims, we had enough of this, of all this here. So there was uh, the, the owner here was Stéphane Charbonnier or Sharp. Here it says too the the gérant. Um, he was the editor. Well, he's dead. That that happens, you know, with greed. You know, finally gutted. So this is um, you know this is financial crime. I'm sure Eric Porto, they probably have connections to the uh, to the right as well, to the far right. There's no doubt. Uh, I, I mean, I know, I've got proofs. So somebody who knows about financial crime should look it up, you know, instead of all pointing at Muslims and you know, uh, it's financial crime. That's what it is, and it's. Um, right-wing politics. Yeah, Charbonnier, Sharp, he's gone. Uh, they we're having a lot of internal strife all the time. Because of money, of course. Eric Porto. Yeah, I think this one, Eric Porto, he might be still there, I don't know. And uh, he might give uh, answers to a lot of questions. And if the Frenchies don't want to do it, maybe the uh, the Americans can do this, because I mean, <laughs> this is what the uh, this is the origin of this so-called terrorism. You know, it's greed and financial crime, you know, related to the far right, which I'm going to talk to you about now. And here it says Charlie Hebdo, les éditions, uh, the um, rotating editions. They're having 1 million euros, 85% are going to the shareholders, Philippe Val and Cabu, well they're gone. They got 330,000, this guy here 110,000 euros and Eric Porto and his wife, he's the uh, the financing, um, responsible for the financing of 55,000 euros. And... Um, Oh, yeah. It's all about money, you know, it's all about greed. They're trying to sell us this thing as under the uh, under the banner of uh, free speech. I mean, where is free speech? We've got the Patriot Act, you know. Well, what, I, I mean, what are they talking about free speech anyway, you know? It's all about greed and money. That's what it's all about. And of course politics, right-wing politics. Within Charlie Hebdo there, there was a lot of strife. They were like fighting like wolves over their prey and even owned by shareholders. Which you can read here in, in French. Uh, le, verité déjà, le vérité déjà dans le fruit. You know, it was already rotten. On ne rigole plus à Charlie Hebdo. You know, they don't laugh anymore at Charlie Hebdo's. So, this article here, it's in Acrime or something like that. Yeah, there it is, Acrime, Action Critique Media, who are, who are criticizing the media, Observatoire de Media, an observatory, you know, over the media. So here's the the, uh, the entire uh, article, 
and it's talking here about here Olivier Ciron. Uh, that is Olivier Ciron. He left. So many people, they l'équipe des anciens. So many people left, and I put in the links for it, but you know it's in French. So they're trying to sell us, sell us the uh, you know, in the media that there were so good people, you know, having a good time and you know fighting for free speech and all that. But in fact, they were fighting over their prey, over the money all the time. There was a whole rotten situation in there, and uh, well, that's what happened. So this is worthwhile reading. It's 2013 by Olivier Sion, and um, who was working at uh, Charlie Hebdo, and he, you know, he writes what really happened there. So here's his article. You can see some more of the absolutely disgusting, you know, cartoons they made. You know, like this here. <laughs> it's disgusting, isn't it? It's all very homo stuff. You know, it's always with a lot of naked asses. This is Mohammed, his naked ass. You know, why? You know. I mean, I'm not religious, you know, but uh. I don't like it very much, but it doesn't mean that I don't respect religious people, neither Christians or Buddhists or Muslims or Jews or whatever. We have to respect them. I mean, I can have a different opinion, but not like this. It's disgusting. This is hate. This is hate porn. It's political. It's right wing. Then, in the beginning of 2006, the right-wing community got very much interested in the racial aspect of the anti-Islamic cartoons of this original left-wing newspaper and liking it very much. Charlie needs money. Right-wing has traditionally more of it. And there we go. An unholy marriage between the ultra-left and the extreme right. Going in bed together and nicely greased up with a lot of money for this kind of rough and slightly painful intercourse between the politically far left and far right. So here the left got literally f in the uh, sodomized like in Charlie Hebdo's cartoons in compromising positions. And politrix it is. So now that finally some Muslims stepped into the wide open trap and after the Paris massacre, the far right and Marine Le Pen with uh, Switzerland behind will try and kick François Hollande and his socialist government out of office. Remember how I showed you in my previous video how it is exactly both Marine Le Pen and Switzerland reacting with fascist measures after the Paris massacre. And it was in fact the French National Front that introduced the Swiss Octogon into the Charlie Hebdo financing affair. Because the entire international fascist community knows that if they need weapons or financing, Switzerland will always help. Just as Octogon's Nazi Templars finance Hitler. Here in Zurich 1923, financed by Swiss General Ulrich Wille Jr. This is why Marine Le Pen will always be thankful to the Swiss as here on December 18th, 2014, showing her gratitude, saying, Switzerland is our dream. Or on March 15th, 2011, saying that she is inspired by Switzerland. And she has done so on numerous other occasions. So this is blood dripping off the Swiss fondue, you know, that m melted cheese. It's all in the same time frame when the far right executed their fascist wave with the Charlie Hebdo 2006 Mohammed caricatures 
and in 2007 the horrendous Swiss racist wave of showing immigrants as black sheep in the streets and media. Well, you think that simultaneous act was just a coincidence? All the world's, and in this case Europe's, right-wingers, they're in contact with each other, just like a president and his ministry. Or like the prophet and his pi pious follower, in, as in this case. Marine Le Pen is a lawyer, and she was brought up in the richest neighborhood of France called Saint-Cloud. And her father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, and founder of the French National Front, is a Jesuit where the Marie part in his name implies a Catholic background. Here you can see he went to a Jesuit high school, Jean-Marie Le Pen, and um, he went to a university, Panthéon, Assa, Panthéon. Yeah. So this is fascism for the rich. Marine Le Pen's father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, is a billionaire. And I went to Saint Cloud once, and I'm not sure if I saw more video surveillance cameras or more golf clubs. This is Nazism for the rich, who try to mobilize Nazism for the poor, to do the dirty job for them. And this is rich Octogon Switzerland, the Alpine conglomerate and Hydra with eight mortal heads. And there she is again. She's even holding a Swiss, uh, a Swiss flag of the Templars, Simplified Templars flag. And in her right hand, she's having uh, the French rooster, which is of course Horus, as I showed you before in my uh, Omaha Beach video. So she is Swiss, you know, there's no doubt. Swiss is everywhere. They emigrated everywhere in the world. They all have... You know, they're sleeper agents, as in the U.S., you know, one million Swiss Americans in the U.S. And here in Switzerland, they're everywhere, the Swissies. She is Swiss, believe me. And the Switzerland of the Octogon Nazi Templars is the base of Nazism, providing both weapons and money it's no wonder that the weapons used in more than 10 Nazi murders by the German Nationalist, Nationalist Socialist Underground NSU, that they came from Switzerland. Now you can see one of the main guns used uh, in killing many people lately, and uh, from Switzerland. It's, it's a, it says a Czech gun. It's like, you know... Secret Service stuff, you know. It's always Switzerland. You know, always. And in Ansi, liquidating an entire Arab-British family with a Swiss gun from Switzerland. Uh, here it says, it happened 40 miles from Switzerland and the, the gun was a Luger P08, uh, which was standard issue to the Swiss Army. And why does it say highly distinctive? Well, because the, the Germans used the, uh, the nine uh, parabellum, that means for the war, bellum is war, and para is for. And the Swiss used the, um, a 32 caliber, small caliber. The father of the Arab British family was involved in financing Islamic State and other Islamic suicide missions with Swiss Nazi funds over the Swiss banks in Wahhabi Qatar where the Swiss got banking licenses in 2008 due to the US pressure by the IRS. It's therefore not very long after the Swiss banks got their Qatari license that ISIS Islamic State popped up and given and has given the name ISIS because Switzerland also means ISIS. See the Pharaoh show. And about the financing, I explained that partly in this video and some other videos I made. I have no doubt that the hardware used in the Paris massacres came from and through Switzerland. And these Muslim pawns have no idea. 
The Islamofascism already started in World War II with German SS Muslim divisions like Hanjar and Skanderberg under Jerusalem's Mufti Amin al-Husseini and Yasser Arafat's uncle. Later, the Swiss great eminences as François Genoux, well, he was a personal friend of Hitler, and Ahmed Huber al Swissri continued the collaboration between octagons Nazis and militant Islam. See my other videos for that. Now here you can see this is François Genoux, one of the most dangerous men of the 20th century. And just watch his evil black eyes, you know, just like the that evil Swiss Nazi aggressive cop that hit me. It's the same, it's the same. The Paris massacre was ordered, financed and organized by Octogon of the Nazi Templars. And this is why they prefer to use lost souls, lost between the Western culture and the Oriental roots who have done prison for petty crime doing time for minor defenses or just thrown in the sl into the slammer for nothing. So they feel hate, which will open them up for the ultimate adventure. Haven't you noticed then, it's always the same pattern. All relatives and friends say that it was not the same person who came out of prison, or that they suddenly changed. Normal kids who liked hip-hop, girls drinking some beer, cars playing soccer and having fun and they just change completely as if they were not the same person anymore and in prison pharaoh has 100 percent total control over you and controls what you eat drink and do when you eat where you are what you do and in my case in torture switzerland even how much you breathe through code O2T. And the code O2T, in fact, is part of mind control as well, which they did to me, but um, I'm still here. So it's quite easy to pick you out of your cell in the middle of the night and submit, submit you to some MK Ultra artichoke mind control sessions, or even the latest transhumanism mind control as shown here on the picture and France is is the leading country in the world at the moment concerning transhumanism and that's why the interior minister uh, Valls in France is, is saying now we're gonna put them all in solitary confinement all the Muslims so that's e even easier you know to pick you out in out of your cell in the middle of the night and and do all these monstrous things with you, which they do. I mean, it's always uh, psychiatrical patients and uh, prisoners, war prisoners or criminal prisoners who are the first victims of uh, you know uh, human experiments and uh, as guinea pigs. You know, there's nothing new. And then in prison, during the day, they have to listen to some infiltrated, inserted PSYOP agents of the royal bloodline of Pharaoh looking and speaking Arabic to indoctrinate you with two million times that life after death is the real deal. And this is also why the so-called terrorists in, uh, of the Paris massacre, uh, they were permitted to say they were trained in Yemen so the US Air Force can bomb, bomb the hell out of them because the Yemenites are absolutely uncontrollable by Pharaoh and the local authorities are desperate not being able to rule the Yemenites who cannot even be bought with a Mercedes as in the rest of the Islamic Ummah. Well maybe the US Navy are just trying to find a solution for their obesity problems by chewing some Yemenite cat and become a skinny themselves. Well, anyway, to be honest, I've become a fat bastard myself because of four years house arrest, one year in prison as a political prisoner, O2T torture and 18 years of Swiss Nazi terror. So I'd better hop along too and choose some of that plant. 
in today's Swiss uh, newspaper on January 12th, 2015, Swiss he calls these heads of state hypocrites. Uh, here you can read the German word, word Heuchler, for hip, meaning hypocrite, about, the, uh, about Charlie Hebdo. These are people who travelled a long way to follow the French invitation for world peace by French Socialist President François Hollande and his Marche Républicaine. Because Swissy is angry because of this. Because Swissy wants war in the world, but only for others. Now you can read the whole article. This is uh, La Marche Républicaine. Yesterday, Sunday, after the Paris massacres, the Swiss are angry. They're very angry. And that newspaper I just showed you before is the biggest in Switzerland. It's the voice of the Swiss people, and Swissy likes it very much because they always show that all other peoples races and religions are the bad ones and the hypocrites and not these ones here as the Swiss Justice Minister Simonetta Zomaruga who knows all who knows all about my case and the Swiss Nazi terror of 18 years on me and my family and my small children and under her Ministry of Justice and even admits to others that Swiss Nazi terror on immigrants is totally normal in clean, neutral Switzerland. Here's you standing, by the way, here, next to Merkel and uh, Hollande. Yeah, look at that funny smile. And then attends a peace march against terror in Paris with that funny Swiss smile. That doesn't come from the heart. Well, you tell me who the real hypocrites are here, or Heuchler, as the Swiss prefer to call it. And here's the letter in which she admits to others, and not me, that terror in Switzerland is quite acceptable. Also in connection with the terror attacks of the Swiss Defence League only two months ago with many dead and wounded and about which nobody talks. Just watch the SS for Isis at the beginning of his signature and the Templars V at the end. Just as the French hero police of the Paris massacre carries octagon seal of evil in their banner. So this is not the police themselves, well, they are the police themselves, but it is a infiltrated organization by Octagon and the Swiss. It's not under the, uh, the French Republic or the, uh, the French Parliament. And it is the, uh, the police union or Les Syndicats, Les Syndicats de la Police. So it's not the police themselves. And there are five, you know, as we have five fingers on a hand. And there's this um, Templar saying, non fac et pugnum digito uno. With only one finger, you cannot make a fist. And here's this one finger of the police, the yellow one, and the other ones are the other fingers of the, um, of the hand. You see? The symbols are everywhere. So this is infiltrated by Octogon from Switzerland. And they want more power, more police, more guns. More Swiss guns. Well, the French police all have Swiss guns, and they they made it happen. You know, this is infiltration. Uh, they forced. The, I mean, the French they make atom bombs. You know, you think they can't they can't make a little a little handgun? No, they all have Zeek. The entire Sw French police they have Swiss Zeek handguns. Just as one third of the American, uh, the U.S. police. So I mean, symbols don't lie. It's here. This is infiltrated by Swissy, by Octogon of the Templars. And they protect their police, like, sort of, and they say, well, we need Swiss guns. You know, they kill like a Swiss watch, as they are so precise, you know. So, in fact, Charlie Hebdo was right-wing, led, 
and so were the three Muslim warriors. And this is also why some Jews too had to be murdered in the raids in Paris because of François Genoux, Hitler and Ulrich, Swiss Ulrich Willis nobility. The 1099 Jerusalem ma massacres on Jews and Arabs by the Nazi Templars and because of old settlements from Pharaoh's time as octagon of the Nazi Templars still is the same old royal bloodline of Pharaoh. I can give you names and proofs of what I say and the true responsibles behind the Paris massacres, but I need a safe haven for me and my family. The Swiss are real opportunists who patiently wait in the spider's web for the eight-legged octagon to strike. How, how controversial it might sound, but in a way those three Muslims in Paris were probably the most honest of all in this utterly dirty affair. Just like the Germans, in a way, thinking to fight for Germany and the G Germanic race, but in reality destroying it. And next to three misled youngsters honestly thinking to fight for Allah, only th another three French policemen were sacrificed like pawns on a political chessboard by the kings and the queens and bishops for the castles of octagons, royal bloodline and their base in the Alps. In October 2014, some good Germans from the international circles of friends of Sean Ross wrote a letter to several Swiss authority officers as the Justice Department and others. And actually, they got only one response from the Swiss Ministry of Justice in the name of Swiss Minister of Swiss Justice, Mrs. Zimonetta Zomaruga. The letter responded in the typical Swiss way that nobody is ever responsible for any Swiss crimes and that Swissy never has done anything wrong. It's the automatic Swiss we don't know mechanism. Just as any criminal's first reaction to the cops is I don't know what you're talking about. There was no just reaction like, we will investigate the matter. No human emotion involving that false Swiss picture of the Red Cross and human rights they're presenting the world and no apologize for the Swiss police violence, criminal justice lies, 17 years of terror to an entire family, nothing. So just punch pause if you want to read it. This proves how they know about the case and that the entire Swiss people and their criminal state agrees with police terror and judiciary lies while smiling to the outside and behave like devils inwardly behind the screens. And me, Sean Ross, before discovering YouTube in 2010, I sent, without exaggeration, thousands of letters for help. First inside Switzerland, and when I saw that nobody cared, and even giving me more problems, I started to send them abroad. It's all in German. Uh, so anybody who can read it, I just leave it here as a proof, you know. And um, so the Swiss mafia, they can't just get rid of it. See, it's there. 
There's only YouTube and some good people against the Swiss crime. So this is what some good German people wrote recently when Swissy wants to put me in prison again. And they know too, you know, it's been on YouTube and on television how even German immigrants from the much poorer part of Germany, like in the east, from the former uh, eastern part of Germany, how they are terrorized and threatened and, you know, by the Swiss and their police. There are lots of stories about that. I actually have more files and letters and a computer uh, which got all stolen by the Swiss Nazi police. They just had to disappear uh, when they arrested me with the, with the not anti but just a plain terror squad in 2011 at the time when the Bilderberg meeting was going on in Switzerland. Um, they also stole our, 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 our trailer, our caravan, just like plain car thieves they did uh, we have no idea where I went to you know it's been years they stole my computer and never got it back you know they they just tried to get rid of all the evidence just as they used the uh, their corrupt justice department to um, to make me take off that video of that Swiss Nazi cop uh, hitting me you know and actually the police are public persons and a public person you are allowed to film because that's why they're public persons you know um, they, they just take away all the proofs but these letters are quite recent and uh, so it shows that the uh, the Swiss authorities they know about the case you know but they say well it's okay you know it's just a foreigner we can do what we want and actually the Swiss they know the Nazi police, they, they, they absolutely know that they can just do what they want. They will never be, you know, they make people disappear, they kill people. Um, if, there will, if there would be um, a uh, appeal in, a, um, in another court, in a higher court, or a European court, then it gets very dangerous as well. But when it concerns Switzerland, no institution of human rights or other will help, as if the order has been handed out internationally. But just watch how alert they are when it concerns Swiss interests. Then there is a very quick and tightly orchestrated response and all sorts of Swiss organizations popping up like the Swiss Defense League or Templar Return. In the case of the Luxor massacre of November 17th, 1997, for example, where out of 58 tourists gone down at Pharaoh's Temple, no less than 36 were Swiss. It says 36 were Swiss. So what's this high percentage of Swiss doing there, eh? And the percentage of Swiss who got killed at Luxor was even higher than that, as 10 of the 58 killed were Japs. And we find always Japs everywhere, as we can see here, so we don't have to really count them, thus getting as high as 90% of the, of the killed being Swiss. Well, the Swiss do lead criminal inquiries. No, but only if it concerns them. So typical of this Nazi country. Now how come, compared to the population of the rest of the world, there are comparably so many Swiss visiting the Pharaoh of Egypt? How 
Well, the Swiss are no real Europeans, are no part of the European community and practically own the EC. It has been recently discovered that both Swiss have pharaonic DNA and their country was founded by the Templars of aristocratic descent of the royal Per A bloodline. Jan did my nan, Yarek. Herr, Yarer, my nahar, har. Here, Jan arms up, watch, Yarez. Hum, Jan af naf, Jan sit naf. So, no wonder we find Swissy writing books entitled My Egypt, as Swiss misses Baraki here. Well, it says, My Egypt, Switzerland's Egypt, Pia Baraki from Switzerland. Wait a minute, Mrs. Baraki? And you said that the other Baraki also has Swiss roots and is not really Buona Mbama? Well, there's the whole story, a Swiss woman writing books like it's her, her Egypt. Oh, no wonder. Swissy considers Egypt as theirs. It's their origin. That says again. Mein Ägypten. My Egypt. It's theirs. It's, that's where they are from. You know. In 2004, 132,000 Swiss visited Egypt, and there are 100 Swiss companies in Egypt. Not bad for a country that depicts Muslims and foreign immigrants in general as subhumans in their streets. All the time, immigrants get brutally murdered by the Swiss, as here, as a revenge for the Luxor massacre on November the 17th. And on the very same date as the Luxor massacre in 1997, Swissy committed arson on a home for asylum seekers in Geneva, leaving some immigrants dead and severely wounded in this year, 2014. Here you can see it. Yeah, November 17th, 2014. Well, this is the exact same date as the Luxor Massacre. And just before, we could have read that the Swiss Templars, or the Swiss Defense League, they're never going to forget it. You see? We all read it. But don't think that the Swiss police is, you know, investigating this. Oh, no. I mean, they are the Nazis. And in Vernier, it's, it's a center of very high-placed Nazis, like the Citoyen Genevois. And, uh, I mean, I visited them myself. I swam in their swimming pool in Vernier. That's where they are. So, I mean, the, uh, the proofs are there, you know. Here it says, a Swiss Knights Templar never forgets. I mean, they say it. I mean, any policeman can investigate this. It's the same date. They say it. They never forget. But, of course, they're not going to spell it out for you, you know. But, uh, I mean, they did it, you know, Vernier, I, I know this place, you know. So this is on the Swiss, well, I, show, I, I go up and do it from down to up from going down. So you can read it all yourself, punch pause. All the things they're writing here.
They're all related. They're one, one big family. Here it says. Knights Templars, never forget. So this is on the Swiss, uh, the Swiss website of the... Uh, oh, there it is. Mm, charming, isn't it? So this is why some people had to die. In uh, Geneva, on uh, here you see the Swiss Templars here, and the other, I think it's by this Norwegian Templar. And you see, you know, this is what the Norwegian Templar, what he, what he, it's a, um, of independence, a declaration of independence, something like this. The, uh, so, so they're all related with the Swiss. I mean, th this is a Swiss website, I told you so. And they sa they're saying it, you know, we're not going to forget. So, and it is the same date, so just put one and one together. Yeah, say, so, Swiss Army stuff, you know, and what are they up to, you know? A Templar never forgets. So innocent immigrants have to die for this. Oh, this is Switzerland. Yeah. The Swiss Defense League. Luxor on November the 17th. And by incident, you know, like a coincidence. Out of nowhere, you know, and out of the blue sky. Again, November the 17th in Switzerland, where they say we're not going to forget. And where most of the, um, the victims came from of the Luxor massacre, they kill some um, some innocent immigrants, you know. And this they're saying it, you know. And nobody does a thing. I mean, there, this was a revenge. There was murder. They're all in Vernier. It's a center of very high placed Nazis. The Templars, you know, the Templars. I told you, the Nazi Templars. Oh. And in Vernier, which is a rich area, there are two types of Nazism. Nazism for the poor, you know, they go with their hands up and, you know, um, cut all their hairs off and, you know, and go on the streets, very obvious. And then there's the other type of Nazism, the Nazism for the rich, for the, rich, the industrials, Switzerland, the, the, uh, the financial elite and the Templars. And they're all in Vernier. And they just give a few calls to the north of Germany or the east, like in Saxony, you know, where all the, the poor Nazis live and they're willing to, to do it, you know. And so that what happened. And it's all backed up by the Swiss Nazi police and the Swiss Nazi Justice Department. As the, the entire Swiss Nazi people, they all agree with this, you know. I, I know it by now. It's horrible, 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 horrible. Somebody do something. Well, here, the Swiss Defense League. Well, what do they have to defend themselves from? It's the other way around. We have to defend ourselves from them. It says, our, our uh, flag, our land, uh, maximum resistance. Well, what does that mean, maximum? That's maximum is, it's killing, isn't it? That's the maximum resistance. Well, they just did it on November the 17th, on the anniversary of the Luxor massacre, which they're not going to forget. I mean, they write it all down here. Maximum resistance, that's going to the, the, ultimate, the ultimate kill, isn't it? Well, that's what they do. They're, they're saying it here, you know. Disgusting. And it's all backed up by the Swiss Nazi ju judiciary. Nobody does a thing. Well, let's listen to the Swiss pharaoh's gut guttural sounds, shall we now? <laughs> Nashafu Yakmut Ah Sabhata. 
If an immigrant in Switzerland does not abide by the Swiss imposed laws of silence, then the Swiss Nazi police come around to dictate the dictatorship of their fascist Swiss judiciary pals and kill you if necessary on, on some random November 17th. In Germany they have a new phenomenon called Pegida, where tens of thousands of Germans go on the streets with German flags and shout, we are the people. And this new wave is all packed in political correctness where anyone feels the message, we are the German people, instead, transpiring through that thin layer of political correctness. Pegida stands for P for patriotic. E for Europeans, G the German word for against, I for Islamization, D for of or by, and A for Abendland, meaning Christian Western Europe, in the sense of WASP, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, in the German equivalent. Through the sly political correctness you can smell Switzerland behind it again, just as they maneuvered Hitler in place, all smiling through their teeth. And instead of saying against Islam, they say against Islamization. Instead of nationalist Germans, they say patriotic Europeans, simultaneously trying to drag the rest of Europe in for their Swiss goals. And using the medieval word Abendland, to sub substitute Christianity, an undefined word brought back from the Crusades that no one really understands anyway. Abend means evening in German, and land as in English. Opposing the word Morgenland, or morning land for the Orient, Middle East, or Islam as a whole. And there's no German who can explain you how the land of evening relates to Christianity and the white western world, and how the land of mourning relates to Islam and the Orient. Do Europeans live in the evening only, or do Arabs have no evenings at all? So they all follow a slogan without even knowing what it really means, or how typical. But it has in fact a meaning only Pharaoh's aristocracy understands, together with their base Switzerland, want war again, for the others only who don't even seek to understand the name they're running behind. Only Pharaoh, the initiates and the Freemasons know, and therefore we know they are behind it again, playing peoples and religions out against each other, inventing this new organization, Pegida. Well, I'll explain what Abendland means. Just imagine the human evolution of civilization as 24 hours or a day, cyclists. Then, in the morning, Pharaoh consolidated his power on earth over mankind alongside River Nile in ancient Egypt and extended over Persia, Greece and Rome into Europe later on. And therefore we can assume it is 10 to 12 now before total reign of the new world order and sheer evil over us all. The French and Russians understood and revolted up against their masters of the aristocracy, unfortunately quickly beaten down by Pharaoh's masonry and infiltrated communism by Pharaoh and always with the help of Templar Switzerland, who let their Lenin lose on the Russian people. But the French and Russians, they tried at least. The problem though with the Germans, they went unhappy they always beat down and not up. They always blame the minority, thus doing exactly what the perpetrators of their problems want them to do. The word and name Pegida has a very feminine sound, as in Spanish where the A ending 
is feminine and the O ending masculine, which even in Russian is so with the OVA ending. Well, ancient Egypt was a matriarchy indeed, and not by good-hearted women, but more for witches and Isis lesbians. In Spanish, Pegida also sounds like pequeña, meaning tiny or small. Or should we say perfida instead? Anyway, it doesn't sound German at all, because all original Germanic names of the Abendland end with a consonant, like Baum, Himmel, Stamm, Volk, Deutsch, Land, Wald, Wolf, Tier, Mann, Mensch, and not with some feminine vowel of Pharaoh's Isis bitch, like in Pegida. <laughs> and in Pharaonic, Pe means this, Gi means to lie, as in slander, and the, land or world, Pagi the, or this land of slander, or this world of lies, the very words of Seth on. Lord of Darkness, referring to what believers call God's creation, which Sethon, Seton, calls the world of lies to his followers, and Muslims are strong believers in God's or Allah's creation, making Pegida, this world of lies, the perfect slogan defining Seth, Seton's true world. So the word Pegida is as un-German as the word Nazi, which comes from the Italian word word nationalismo, therefore written with a Z, as in Italian, where Mussolini already was in power long before Hitler was, therefore taking over the Italian word for a nationalist, and ending the Italian way with an I as so many an Italian word as Pirelli, Fratelli, or you name it, and again with a non-Germanic ending. Plus, the word nationalist in German is written with a T, as in English. So here you can see Mr. Himmler, the Swiss Mr. Himmler, he was an ethnic Swiss, and he said Islam uh, resembles our view of the world, word, world very much. So he said, Islam resembles the view of our world very much. And Hitler said the same things. When I heard the word Pegida for the first time, I thought of a Buddhist pagoda, of that equally pharaonic religion, as all religions of the world are. And guess what? Etymologically, the word pagoda comes from the Chinese words pa ko ta meaning the octagon tower, where pa means eight in Chinese. Here it says, pa ko ta, here is in Chinese. That means the word, that's the word for pagoda. Well, here it is, in China, there was an eight-cornered uh, tower, octagon. I mean, they ruled the world, and all Chinese emperors, they were pharaohs. Uh, it is well known and well spread that the, the Chinese emperors, they were not Chinese, but Mongols. And, uh, well, they, the Mongols were very much connected to, uh, to pharaoh. As in the uh, uh, Khazar, the Khazar uh, Mon Mongols. Ka, it is, it is the, uh, the soul, the living power of the soul when alive, the life, the intrinsic life energy, and sa, it means a king. So that means the soul of kings, they are there. And these are Mongols, the Khazars. And uh, they are pharaohs. So here's a connection with uh, Octogon. And it's all in the name. It's, I mean, symbols don't lie. So Pegida is again another aristocratic organization led by Swiss Octogon, and I call him therefore Perfida. The French magazine Charlie Hebdo was making fun of the sufferings and murder of millions of people by NATO in the Muslim world, 
which is really unethical and asking for trouble, and has nothing to do with liberty of speech. Cancer has spread out through Iraq, Libya, Syria and Afghanistan because of depleted uranium used by NATO. And this French pervert magazine is making fun of it, thus turning murder into a joke. These are well-known techniques of psychological warfare by using humour and funny caricatures to play down mass murder so we get used to it and finally agree that killing millions of Muslims and their children is quite okay. The Nazis used the same type of PSYOP propaganda. This weekly French magazine with 50,000 readers is made by homosexuals, four homosexuals always showing a male's butt, the shithole, the male organs and males with women's garments on. They really are the top of the New World Order mainstream media prostitutes who use humour and funny drawings to pull our children into their filth and slowly accustom them to sodomy and other perversions. Which has nothing to do with liberty of speech as they find their inspiration in deep hatred for others as for the Muslims in this case because they oppose homosexuality to be not suitable for their beloved children. So these mainstream homo agitators of Charlie Hebdo decided to play out the Muslims against other people and other religions by depicting their Muslim genitals and naked asses with something sticking in it in all sorts of sodomizing positions in their truly diabolical caricatures in a devilish way and camouflaged by humor, free speech and backed up by the rest of the mainstream media, the police, the authorities, the Justice Department, the, well, the whole New World Order. So today, January 7th, 2015, some Muslim warriors got rid of this filth for us. And it seems that Pharaoh's evil media will get what they were aiming for. Now there's more slaughter, war and hatred in the air. All because of these homos and their sodomite drawings. I gave this video here a French title as a parody to the actual French and already international Je suis Charlie, meaning I am Charlie, that people use to express their solidarity with the French pervert magazine, so I permitted myself the subtle wordplay Je suis Charlie instead of Je suis Charlie, which sounds the same but means the opposite. And here you can see, and you know, even after death, they, they, they don't stop sticking things in holes, it just continues. Je suis is from the French verb essuyer, meaning to clean out, but also used in essuyer le feu in mili military terminology, meaning taking in enemy fire and or engage fire. I learned this French slang while having combined operations with the Frenchies. So here you can see it. Uh, uh, essuyant le feu de l'ennemi. And here's the English translation. So the... Um, in, in the I form, SVA, it is Je suis, as in Je suis Charlie. So Je suis means cleaning out a rat's nest, as in Je suis Charlie. Three Muslim warriors sweeping with AK 47s through the agitator's nest, while most certainly thinking by themselves, let's clean the rat's nest out as in Je suis Charlie. So here you can see Charlie Hebdo's Christmas edition, it's November 2014, with uh, Christ 
popping out here, out of this here, with the nose of a pig. And here it says pin it. So these are the type of guys, this is what they were doing. I'm quite sure that Charlie Hebdo will appreciate my subtle joke being the sort of thing they enjoyed so much, making jokes on someone else's behalf, on another man's misery. So come on, Charlie, tear up, eh, and let have a pint or two, and do a toast on Je suis Charlie, on est mort de rire. Well, don't turn on that face now. Well, these are the types of jokes you like, pal. Um, well, so now you don't like funny jokes all of a sudden, eh? when the fun concerns your own misery and not somebody else's. And here it says, uh, La véritable histoire de petit Jésus. So it means, this is the true story of little Jesus. Uh, implying that the, uh, the story in the Bible is not true. So, well. Look what you did, eh, Charlie? The whole world wants to see blood now and is calling for vengeance. Because of you racist pervert agitators and two French cops gave their lives for your evil little sodomy cartoons. Hey Charlie, you think that orphan kids are going to understand that daddy had to sacrifice his life for some political hate porn cartoons? But no, this is how Charlie sees children and depicts them as pigs. I feel sorry for the cop's children, also because I've always been fair treated with respect and friendliness by the French police. Not at all like those Swiss Nazi police liars of fascist Switzerland and their criminal behaviour. And in fact, Charlie Hebdo, CH, has the same initials, CH, for Switzerland, or Confederatio Helvetica. Is that an omen? Or a coincidence? One can sense Octogon, furthermore, as Charlie Hebdo, their car cartoons, have more in common with Hitler's Völkische Beobachter or Julius Streicher's Der Stürmer and their smear campaigns, which in fact real left-wing people would never do. So how come CH, or Charlie Hebdo, has become the status of a left-wing magazine when the drawings they show are so typically right-wing extremists with a strong racist and intolerant taste. Well, according to this man here, Olivier Siron, who has worked 10 years for Charlie Hebdo editorial, Charlie Hebdo Hebdo has changed from left-wing to racist right-wing, also through infiltration. So this guy must have heard and seen things, and he's an important witness, that Charlie Hebdo is not left-wing, but pure right-wing, and taken over by fascist ideas using Nazi-like smear campaigns showing racism and no tolerance for minorities. Well, this sounds like Octagon. And even more, if you see all the immediate right-wing reactions after the Charlie Hebdo massacre, right-winger Marine Le Pen of the French National Front, which with seats in the European Parliament, is taking steps to reintroduce the death penalty for Muslims. And I wouldn't be surprised if this lady is of uh, Swiss descent. Not surprised at all. This is Octogon. 
And the other CH of the motherland and their SVP Nazi party is taking steps to introduce new Swiss laws forbidding only Muslims to settle down in Switzerland and to withdraw Swiss passports from Swiss-born Muslims. Let's have a uh, sitrep, short for situation report on this. Europe's right-wingers have been pushing for decades to install their Nazi dictatorship in Europe. Only problem, too many left-wingers around pouring too much vinegar into the soup. So they've been waiting in the box for this moment to come. But now, all of a sudden, Europe's left-wingers go massively on the streets in their hundreds of thousands for a cause they thought to be theirs with Je suis Char Charlie, I am Charlie banners and all the right-wingers see their moment coming with all the left-wingers all mobilized for an idea put in place by the right-wingers and their wars against minorities now being taken over by all Europe's fractions through octagon sly infiltrations leading to the next fascist avalanche coming up with more restrictive, oppressive total control laws for everyone coming up. All because of these pervert homo sodomy hate porn cartoons in the name of the left wing world, but in fact serving the right wing world of Octogon. Well played, very intelligent psyop strategy. And Switzerland is all hyped up to initiate their three newly built concentration camps for the next genocidal purges with the preliminaries unfolding in front of our eyes. Bye bye Charlie. Like a true Muslim, you suicide newspaper bomber. It's June 2014 and the Soccer World Cup is being played in Brazil. Switzerland made it too through the selection games only because 95% of its players are Albanians, Yugoslavs, Turks, South Americans, Africans and other immigrants. As the Swiss themselves can't play any football. Because the Swiss national sports are conspiracy, money making, corruption, Nazi banking, big theft, racism and plain hatred. And it's therefore that the International Soccer Federation or FIFA was founded in... Yes, Switzerland again, as always, where all the world's NGOs are, are concerning all mankind's concerns and interests so Octogon can steer and control it all. So this is in Wikipedia. So here we can read it. They were founded in 1904. The headquarters is in Zurich, Switzerland. And uh, the president is Sepp Blatter, a Swiss. It's all Swiss. And the logo is to the two circles of the Vesica Peiches and the sun here. All Freemason stuff. And it's always Swiss. Always. Ever. All the NGOs, it's all Swiss. This is where the, um, the shadow government is. This is where they rule the world. Well, Octogon killed him before they, uh, he could expose this plot. And the same thing happened with this guy here as well. He didn't make it. He was killed by Octogon. And he even admits it that he was on the pay list of Octogon and Swiss America trading. So he had problems with his conscience. Um, you know, first they come and like offer money when they see that uh, somebody has a big voice. Uh, a influential voice and um, so and then they offered him money paying his show what he says as well and um, then they 
squ squeeze them into more and more uh, things to do and which he finally stopped so they killed him <laughs> The Hour of the Time, ladies and gentlemen, is brought to you by Swiss America Trading. They specialize in non-confiscatable, non-reportable hard assets, real money as described in the Constitution for the United States of America and in the law. So believe me, the Swiss have their dirty little fingers in everything. Even Bill Cooper, even Alex Jones with his logo and always saying Switzerland is so good and everything. Um, in spite of the fact they robbed the U.S. blind, the Swiss did, and they um, they pleaded guilty of conspiracy. Well, they did 9-11, there's no doubt about it. Only Octagon can do this. And even Bill Cooper was on their pay list. You get it? Call Swiss America Trading, 1-800-289-2646. That's 1-800-BUY-COIN. Well, he says it himself. They paid his show. This is what the Mafia does. You know, first they come and give you something, and then they want a whole lot back. Didn't they, Bill? Well, there they are. They even have a YouTube channel, Swiss America Trading. And they have a website. So these are the guys. There's the website uh, with whom Bill Cooper went to bed with. And before he knew what was happening, they were asking um, many favors of him and forced him to do things. First they give you money and, and help you, and then they ask more and more and more. And if you won't do it, as Bill Cooper certainly didn't do that, well, then you're dead. And there shouldn't be any more doubt that the shadow government or world government is an octagon of the Alps. Everything is in or was founded in and comes from Switzerland with all the Geneva NGOs like the World Trade Organization, the ICRC, Red Cross, the Olympic Committee, the IOC, the United Nations, the Templars Banks, the Eurovision Frankenstein Conchita thing, World War II, the Nazi Red Line, Swiss mercenaries, the burning of witches and the Malleus Maleficarum written by the Swiss, Octagon Police, the, uh, the Ku Klux Klan, the Pope's Guard, some US presidents, etc, 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 and much more. So the FIFA the the the, um, the, Feder the international federation of the of the football association was founded in switzerland in 1904 and is based in zurich where the main central head office the, their headquarters is and where i shot this footage in 2013. fifa this is the world soccer organization in zurich what are they so afraid of? Look at that. Everything is closed. I thought I thought soccer was for fun. Oh no, it's big business. No, it's politics. It is. The president of that octagon FIFA is of course yes, the Swiss. And he has been so for the last 20 years with enormous corruption, fraud and financial crime around our game in the hands of Octogon and the Swiss. The Swiss financial crime around the FIFA and our game in the hands of the Swiss are so bad that last week the English Lord Treesman compared the FIFA with the Mafia and Sepp Blatter, it's Don Carleone. A statement backed up by David Gill, Greg Dyke, and other high-ranking officials. Well, you can read the whole, the whole article. I'll put in the links for you. Oh, just sponge pause, eh? So, Swissy Zeb Blatter immediately called everyone a racist who dared to criticize him. Him, Blatter. 
a neutral, innocent and clean Swiss from Octagon and a country that financed Hitler and the Nazis and where racism fills the Swiss hearts in Switzerland, the most racist country in the world and against which Mr. Swiss FIFA president would never say a single word. Therefore, it's no wonder that this country where they can't play soccer has given our game to another country where they don't play soccer either. And where it's even too hot to think about soccer, let alone playing it. Yes, Qatar in 2022. And Octagon even prepared the octagonal Octagon logo for them with a pentagram in the middle. And Qatar lies in the Arabian desert where northern European sportsmen are supposed to participate and compete a world tournament in a place so hot that it feels like having your girlfriend's hair dryer right in your face the whole day. Not that those fancy millionaire soccer players and their fancy thousand dollar playboy hairstyles are not acquainted with their girlfriend's hair dryers, but nevertheless... So why the hell play soccer in the Arabian desert like Lawrence of Arabia, where the local pharaohs only know if football is round because they saw it on TV while chewing cat, as in the very name of cat ah, Qatar? Well, I tell you why. Because since 2008, when the IRS and the US Justice Department started to build up pressure on the Swiss Nazi banks, a financial shift from Switzerland to Qatar and the rest of the Arab Emirates started to take place, where Qatar paved the way for Swiss banksters to install and perpetuate their financial crime on several conditions. You do that for, you do that for me and I will do this for you concerning the World Champ Soccer Championship, eh? So, you can read the whole story here, just punch pause. Ah, oh, there they are again. Bill Cooper, Swiss America trading. Well, Bill Cooper, he had no idea whatsoever with whom he was uh, uh, having contact with and and what kind of a danger he was getting into look there they are again Swiss America well they're all over you know well they did Mr. Bill Cooper because he refused to do what they asked him to do you see this is from Finance Asia this is what I'm telling you 2008 then the whole thing started and they saw it coming then it started with the IRS and the US Justice Department and um, later on the Snowden affair, it was all about the Swiss banks. So what they do, they just shift it to Qatar. But Qatar, you know, the Qataris, they want something back as well. So you do that for me and I'll do this for you. But we want the World Soccer Championship having in our hair dryer um, Arabian desert. Now this is what's going on. And there's no mainstream media whatsoever who are telling you anything about this. Yeah? So I hear some more about it. In 2008, when it all started, that was the, uh, that was the big banking collapse, wasn't it? Wasn't that 2008? <laughs> I think it was, eh? So this is one of the Swiss, seven Swiss presidents. And I talked to her once. And it was just... A few minutes or maybe 20 minutes after a Swiss guy he jumped off a bridge in Switzerland why well, I, I never heard a noise like that before it, it, it sounded like two cars smashing upon each other like a collision metallic so this is what going on eh? Now, this is 2009 
So here's some more. The Swiss bank rushes to Qatar. So the Swiss banks, they're getting a, a license for Qatar. At the very same time, the, the, um, it's been announced and agreed upon, you know, by Octogon, that our soccer game are going to place going to be done like in the, in the Arabian desert like you know it has nothing to do with soccer it's all financial crime and corruption and Switzerland it's just about big business big filthy business and a bunch of lies and it's thus how the Swiss FIFA and Mr. Blatter gave our game to the land of the hairdryers, which they themselves call an emirate because of the emirs ruling in them, which is a sort of a pharaoh with shopping malls showing huge pyramids and obelisks upon ent entry. So this is the Wafi City shopping mall in Dubai. Leaving no doubt that the ISIS jihadist group financed by Qatar, amongst others, gets financed through the trillion dollar business of our soccer madness addiction in the hands of Swiss FIFA, Octagon's 33rd degree mason, Sepp Blatter from Octagon and the Swiss Nazi bank shifting their weight to Qatar on certain conditions. So behind the Qatar financing, I tell you, the Swiss Nazi banks are behind it all. And this is Templar stuff. Already in the Crusades, the Templars and the, uh, the Hashashin, where the word assassin is coming from, they were working already together in those days. So you think they ever stopped doing so? Oh yeah, and here's the realizes, by the way. Just as the SES dressing up as, as, as Arabs and killing people. And there are 13 stars. Uh, just as Osiris was cut into 13 pieces. Because this is part of the Horus Matrix. And Isis, her husband, was cut into 13 pieces. And the 13th part was his phallus. Intelligence, technology, training... Well, you see, this is the real ISIS. So, if anyone from the NSA wants to know more, I can present you all the intel knowing the, crimin knowing the criminal Swiss mind very well after 17 years of Swiss lies and organized Swiss terror. Oh, well, and leave your hair dryers in your holsters when you NSA boys come round visit me. So I tell you, behind the Qatar financing of uh, of the Jihad and Sharia, the Swiss Nazi banks are behind it. Oh, you bet. And as in Switzerland, only money is important. The Swiss FIFA and their Swiss World Soccer President, Zepp Blatter, have absolutely no problem with it that the Emir Pharaohs of Qatar use slaves to build the stadiums for the 2022 World Cup Soccer Hairdryer Games. Qatar and the Swiss attract workers from Asian countries and then upon arrival confiscate the passports, don't send the promised wages to the overseas families, have built large guarded fences around the construction sites, provide, provide bad food and poor hygienic facilities with workers sleeping on dirty mattresses in a corner of the, of the construction site. All in all, leading to the deaths of at least 900 workers so far and an estimated 4,000 work slaves will have, will have died for the Swiss World Soccer Games of 2022 of their Qatar business partners. Yeah, that was in the Guardian. It's all over. It's, I mean, it's, no, it's no secret anymore. Same thing over again as the Swiss that are 
giving the orders to Qatar. They gave the same orders to the Nazis and the concentration camps and the workers. Same thing happening again. And it's the Swiss behind it again. The financing of it. Hey, you read, read that. 4,000 migrant, migrant workers will be dead. Swiss Nazis, are, again, the Templar Nazis behind it. Just as they were behind the concentration camps and making big money out of it, you know. And taking it into their Swiss banks. Similarly, the Swiss and their FIFA ordered the cleansings of Rio de Janeiro poor people in the so-called favelas for the 2014 Soccer World Cup going on now. So here you can see the Swiss, Zeb Blatter, Don Corleone with his, uh, his mafia here, the Swiss mafia, and uh, making a big buck out of Brazil, and making poor people suffer both in Qatar, Brazil and all over. As soon as Brazil won the World Cup host in 2006, the cleansing started with black dressed SWAT terrorists sweeping the favelas and trained by Eric Prince's Blackwater, who we know now is not of Dutch descent but the extension of the lineage of centuries of Swiss mercs all over our beautiful planet and Blackwater's name comes from the Swiss Schwarzwasser region of the Bear as I've all, as I've all shown in my other, my other videos so you can see some pictures, I'll put it in the links see the Blackwater guys there they're just shooting people for the FIFA so the Swiss they can make a lot of money. The Swiss Nazis, yeah? Octogon. Same as in Qatar. Well I put the link in your underneath the video. It's disgusting really. Well, they're having these uh, death squads as well. Must be a clean soccer festival, eh? FIFA go home. FIFA, like mafia. They bulldozed people, people's homes and came with es Escadrones de la Muerte, or death squads, just as Swiss Sperrison recently did in Guatemala. So here you can see Mr. Sepp Blatter in his bulldozer and destroying the houses in the favelas of the, of the poor people for his, uh, for his Swiss uh, mafifa. When the FIFA wants a clean a Switzerland environment to attract more spectators, thus more money, then they'll get it. At the same time evicting poor people out of the favelas where they pay no rent for their shacks and thus are not dependent like in the Monsanto nature patenting uh, program. And this is the, uh, the, um, the logo of the FIFA which is of course the Freemason Vesica Peiches forming the oval here in the middle, like the two circles, just like the Olympic Committee and Gucci, Mastercard and the rest. It's, it's another Freemason Mafifa operation. You can read it, you know, they are, this is, these are cleansings. They, the, the Swiss have people murdered for their, for their, their, their money game here. This is in Qatar. This is Octogon. And they did Bill Cooper as well, I tell you. Hey, some more.
There you see the little boy crying. Brazil soccer and is saying things in, Braz in, in Portuguese. People probably don't have internet, you know, they just make drawings on the wall. They paint it on the walls, that's all they can do. So here's some information about the favelas and the, uh, the world soccer games. The favelas are from 1897 and older than the 1904 founded Swiss FIFA and therefore have more rights to exist than that Swiss all-powerful FIFA. They were built by Brazilian army war veterans and black slaves who called it favela after a jungle tree that makes you itch very badly, thus describing the terrible living conditions of poor people on the marge of society who just wanted to be free, live and breathe the life of freedom. Until the Swiss came round with their FIFA black water and suitcases full of money, a bait to pull out even more suitcases full of money. Yes, Swiss always crushed freedom with money. Nothing new really. Oh yeah, and with the mercenaries they crushed freedom, eh? So you can, you can read some of the history. 1897, that's older than the FIFA. The favelas were first created in 1897 in Rio de Janeiro by Brazilian veterans of the Canudos War, a Brazilian civil war. I'll put in the link for you. So here's some more in Wikipedia. Uh, they were built by soldiers and black slaves and here it says uh, the a favela is a skin irritating tree well etc so put in the links for you Now let's have a closer look at Zeb Blatter or Mr. Don Corleone of the FIFA Mafia and other arm of the conglomerate of the Swiss Mafia or of the Nazi Templars of Octagon, the world's biggest mafia and the world's shadow government. His name, Zepp, is a Swiss Alemannic name also found in southern Germany because of the Swiss mercenaries and their compatriots settling down all over southern Germany after the Thirty Year War ending 1648, meaning Zepp for Joseph. Just as the notorious Zepp Dietrich of southern Germany as well, and descendant of the Swiss mercenary lineage who studied at a hotel school in Zurich, Switzerland, just as Rudolf Hess studied in Zurich, where Hitler got invited and financed by the Swiss and the General Ulrich Wille, all in all leading to the fact why they all got along so well later on, when Zepp Dietrich became the second highest general and Obergruppenführer in the SS and commander of the notorious killer brigade within the SS called the Leibstandarte SS Adolf Hitler. All because of the good old days in Zurich, Switzerland back then making lots of use, useful contacts. So here we can read the whole article where he was Hitler's driver, you know. His chauffeur, he was there from the beginning. He was in the night of the long knives. He was there killing the real German nationalists. And then so it was, it was all taken over by Octagon. So as everything gets infiltrated and taken over. So I'll put in the links for you. And of course he could live on comfortably until 1966. No problem. And this is the German Zepp Dietrich, the German Wikipedia.
which is slightly different and has some more information. Like for instance that it says Dietrich, he was in, the, in Schweiz, which is a German name for Switzerland. While he was in Zurich, he was in a hotel school. So, he probably spent a couple of years there. Just as Rudolf Hess and Mr. Hitler. So, well, that's an interesting fact. It always leads back to Switzerland, the motherland. So, concerning the name Zepp, like in Zepp Blatter, the Godfather. Well, he's another godfather, another killer. Zepp has been working for the FIFA for 40 years, since 1975, and has been its president since the last century and for almost 20 years now. Apparently, he's a 33rd degree Mason and a big Swiss sick pervert concerning his sexual aberrations and pervert fantasies that women must be forced to wear suspender belts and are not allowed to wear party pantyhoses anymore. And as in the land of Baphomet, Baphomet and the Sodomite Templars, these sort of things are completely normal. He became the president in 1970 of a Swiss organization in the motherland which openly tried to prescribe women what sort of garments uh, women should wear under their skirts, just as a Qatari Muslim is equally preoccupied with the ladies' guard rope covering their ladies under a ton of black clothing. So here you can see, you know, this is in Wikipedia. So Blatter was elected president of the World Society of Friends of Suspenders, an organization which tried to stop women replacing suspender belts with pantyhose. What a sick pervert. So he's these kind of guys are like tearing down the favelas and, and having slaves in, in, in Qatar while they're having these, these sick sexual fantasies, you know. And this is so typical Swiss. Where pedophiles and all this are being protected. So this is in Wikipedia, I put it in the links for you, you can all read it yourself. It's sick, it's corrupt. Well, it says there's a lot of corruption allegations in his... Uh, so, I mean, there's, there's no... There's no smoke without fire, eh? What was that? Controversies, allegations of corruption. Well, of course they're true. I don't want to speculate about what other sexual aberrations Swissy Zepp has in a country where the Swissy Parliament voted in favour of incest being okay and totally legal in Octogon of the Alps a few years back, like, come on little boy, let's play some soccer together. Probably explaining why he had to get married three times. Probably engaging in domestic terror over what stockings to wear or not. So you can see this is in 2010, you know. Uh, about incest in Switzerland making it legal. Well, that, that's what the pharaohs did, didn't they? And the aristocracy. You know, like, okay, Swissy. Fuck your mother and your son will be your brother like, you know? Well, this is sick. Excuse my language, eh? I'll put in the links for you. So, this could be seen on uh, the US Daily Mail online. There you go. And in the year 2000, me, Sean Ross, I beat the shit out of one of those Swiss perverts, pedophile, pedophiles called Ernst Stoller from Bern. Well, and guess who went to prison for that? Yes, me 
and not the child molester. There's no other country in the world where these perverts are so highly structured, protected and live in total impunity as in Octagon of the Alps. Zeb Blatter finished university in 1959 where he studied business economics. Well, and you thought football was a game, eh? No, soccer is a business of the Roman bread and games ideology of the ruling class who even get filthy rich out of it. You practice the Swiss laws of silence of the omerta of the Mafia, the Swiss Mafia of Octogon. And Zeb Blatter attended the very same University of Lausanne, Switzerland, where the Prince of Darkness and co-member of the SS had studied law some years before. And he too founded a world-famous NGO only two years after Zeb left that very same university. So on September the 11th, which is an important date for the pharaohs, it's called Enkutatach, 9-11-1961, also including the digit of 9-11, the World Wildlife Fund was founded in Morges, in Switzerland, right next to Lausanne. While the Prince Founder went out shooting tigers with Prince Philip, while we thought to be financing the preservation of the animals instead of financing aristocracies hunting parties. He is in fact the person after whom Ian Fleming got inspired to create his 007 James Bond, not really fiction novels. And the bond it is with Ja for Yachin and Bo for Boas, the two Masonic obelisks as in Ja, Jason, Bo, Born, as in James, Ja, James, Bo, Bond, and the bond confirmed by 007. Where 7 is the number for the pyramid, and consequently the square and compass, as the number 3 stands for the side of the pyramid, as the 60 degree compass, or Isis, Horus, and Seth, the Holy Trinity of the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son, and with four, the pyramid's base or square for the four elements together forming the seven, as in 007. Just as the fair aristocratic Prince of Darkness liked and owned fast cars, airplanes, hunting both animals and women, skiing in Switzerland and attended charming upper-class cocktail parties. One thing, though, he was not really fighting for the cause of justice. With that number 007 implying that he's agent number 7 of an entire three-digit army of almost 1,000 men when 999 is the highest number in the three-digit cate category. And when turned around, giving that other famous three digit of 666 or June 6th, at six o'clock of the Horus Matrix. All those tough agents risking their lives for that old shemale or Omaha bitch called M for Mother or Maria. And being no less than Isis of course of that M sign implying the full 999 digit being one shy of the number thousand in working secret secretly for the next stage against humanity of the thousand year Reich through the 666 horrors matrix. And that's why I, Sean Ross, always say my name is Bond. Vagabond. And you can read about the aristocratic hunting parties which we finance through this uh, Geneva or Lausanne NGO of the World Life uh, fund. And here it is, the real James Bond here. He knew Ian Fleming and um, German SS. What's the aristocracy? I mean, they're 
these pharaohs are ruling anyway, you know. And to them it doesn't matter if it's SS or the MI6, or it's all the same. They're fighting us. And this is what he founded on 9-11, 1961 in Morge, Switzerland, which is right near to Lausanne, where they all went to the university, Prince Bernhard of Lippe Bisterfeld. Switzerland, the headquarters. It says the headquarters um, are in Switzerland. It always is Switzerland. It always is. It all turns around Switzerland. It's the base. Look, here's an article of the New York Times when he died at the age of 93. And uh, well, it says he was in the SS. And uh, he studied in Switzerland. He was even in the. Uh, he was even. Uh, he worked for IG Farben. Those were the the ones who. Uh, well, there it is. Yeah, IG Farben. He worked for IG Farm. Those were the ones who created, who made a Zyklon B. Uh, Tiklon B, which is the word for a cyclone, a, a, a wind, you know, in uh, German, with the, the, uh, the stuff with which all the Jews were poisoned in the shower. Go and have a shower, you know. It was all... Uh, and it's all... It's, all it's, it's very Swiss, you know, the way it's all hidden and, and camouflaged and and omerta the, the the laws of silence it's 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 all around switzerland he studied in um it says he studied in in lausanne switzerland just as zeb blatter and he founded his ngo just like like the fifa and all the ngos it's all swiss all Swiss. The aristocracy, the Templars and Swiss. And the logo of the Swiss FIFA are two balls or circles forming the Mason Vesica Pites together making the oval the power of organization. You see here this is the oval forming with those with the Vesica Pites just as Gucci, Mastercard and the rest. And uh, here it's forming a pentagram. So it's highly Masonic. Just as this other NGO of the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, from Octagon, also forming the Vesica Pites by its five rings of power, also headquartered in Lausanne, Switzerland, and having 33 honorary members. Yeah, this is the Vesica Pitches, just as the FIFA, you know, forming the oval here. And it's based, it has its headquarters in Lausanne. Uh, it has 33 honorary members. And it's always Swiss. Always. Here it says, headquarters in Lausanne, Switzerland. So... Well, and here, and here, look, here's, here's the headquarters. It looked like a high security prison. Look at that. I tell you, Switzerland always has its dirty little fingers in it. And Octagon of the Alps is the very place where the world's shadow government of the Nazi Templars resides. <laughs>